Well, we had another pretty solid game tonight in terms of the competitiveness, but I really felt like this game was a pain to watch. I missed quite a few parts of it for various reasons, and um, for what I saw, the game was just not entertaining. It had no flow because both teams were shooting so many free throws. You know, there weren't a lot of points, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that necessarily, but it was just a tough game to watch. And it really didn't hold up to the standards that the rest of these conference finals have held up. But Orlando 99, Cleveland 89. So Orlando took care of business, protected home court. <clears throat> now the pressure shifts to Cleveland for game four. I think they will win that one. But of course, I thought they would win tonight. So whatever, right? I'm just watching. I'm, I don't have any real rooting interests. I'd rather see Cleveland win, but I'm really not that attached to either side. So it's whatever. Um, you know, LeBron, inefficient. He took a lot of threes, to a lot of jumpers in this game, which is exactly what you want to make him do. And it wasn't falling for him today. And sometimes they do fall for him. So I understand why he would want to try something like that. And it's not that he had a bad game. Um, 41 points. The jumpers weren't falling, so he did go to the hoop and did get to the line quite a bit. He shot 24 free throws. I mean, I think that after a while you kind of have to go, well, you know what, my jump shot's not falling. I need to drive that lane. But it's not that like he wasn't productive. He had a steal, a block, uh, nine dimes, seven boards. So, you know, he was out there playing. I'm not going to say he did a bad job or nothing, but there are were a couple of holes out there that may not show up so much on the stat sheet, but this loss, it's not on him. It, it's not, and, you know, I, I think Mo Williams is a good player. I think a lot of these players around LeBron on, the, on this Cavs team, a lot of people say they're bad players. I, I don't think they are. People call them bad, say that they're not championship caliber. I don't even think that, but... They haven't done this before. Um, you know, Mo Williams, this is the first year he's been on a really good team. He was playing on some pretty up-and-down Bucks teams that didn't really ever get over the top. So he hasn't done this before. He hasn't been in pressure situations before. And the first two rounds, he didn't play that well, but that barely even counts because Cleveland was able to walk all over those guys. So... I guess I understand why he's struggling, but it's been three games. He's got to get over it. He's got to find his shot. You know, again, in this game, he got some points. He had 15 points, which falls in line more or less with his averages, but <clears throat> come on. 5 of 16, 3 of 10 from behind the arc. Just got to be better than that. And 5 turnovers. I, I, I don't know. I mean... I, I respect that he hasn't done this before, and this is the first time he's ever been in a really NBA pressured sh uh, situation, but it, it's time to man up. He needs to be the second best player on this team, unless you want to argue the merits of Verjao, which, you know, I, I could listen to those arguments, certainly. West, Delonte, similar situation. He had, He was pretty sloppy. He was fouling a lot. He was turning it over. 12 points, wasn't terribly inefficient or anything, he had a 3, but it's it's kind of a weird situation because, you know, as far as Delonte West stat lines go, that's pretty much what you would expect from him, that's pretty much what he does, so I, I don't know if you can put it on him necessarily, but he's not stepping his game up. Ogalskis. You know, he wasn't shooting well today, I get that, but get him more shots. Let him get into the rhythm tonight. Uh, you know, I didn't like some of the things he was doing. He was taking too many threes because he's not really that good a three-point shooter. Um, you know, he was obviously off on his shot. He fouled out later in the game, which is no big deal because the game slowly started to get away from him later, but I think they need to try and have Elgowski shoot more jumpers because I think that could be a problem for this Magic team. They, um, you know, Howard, not really used to defending guys on the perimeter, and he can, sh and Elgowskis can shoot over most guys. He can shoot over Rashard. He can shoot over Turkaloo. The, um, you know, he maybe he can't shoot over Howard, but Howard may have a hard time coming out to guard him. 
Verjao, his worth is not really measured in stats, but just looking at it, it really doesn't look that good for him. Didn't get points. He does need to find a way to get tip-ins or something. It, it needs to happen. And nothing from the bench, but that's slowly starting to become the norm. Joe Smith knocked some shots down. Uh, ben Wallace had a couple buckets, but just really no impact off that bench. And You know, I understand that a lot of these guys, they're good defenders, they're good role players that do things that may not show up statistically, but they got to find a way to positively impact the Cavs so they can win. That's ultimately what it comes down to, and tonight they didn't. Obviously, they lost, so... I don't know. I still think Cleveland wins this in six or seven. I still am actually... I think I'm going to stick with six. I don't know. Just a funny feeling. I just think Cleveland is poised to take over this series, but we'll see. For the Orlando side, I, I was... I was pretty impressed. It was a slow, grinded-out game that was tough to watch, and they hung around. Both teams were sloppy for a long time, and when Orlando needed it, Dwight Howard started to score. Um, Turkaloo was getting to the line because he, his shooting tonight was atrocious, don't get me wrong. He could not shoot worth a damn, but he got to the line, he picked up boards, he dished out dimes, so he found ways to impact the game. And same for, you know, Richard. He did not have his best game, but, he, you know, he did enough. I'm, I mean, when you're talking about a guy that's making $167 million on his contract or whatever it is, whatever ridiculous amount it is, you want more than that, but at least he wasn't shooting the magic out of the game like Turkaloo could have. Um, Petrus, huge off the bench. You know, like I've said several times, Michael Petrus is the best bench player in this series and it's not close and that is starting to become a problem for this Cleveland team. Petrus comes off the bench, gives them three-point shooting, gives them points, gives them, you know, 14, 16, 18 points a game and it's just tough. Gortat, not big on the stats by any means, four points, five boards, but I would still take Gortat over any bench player from the Cavs tonight. <clears throat> but story tonight has to be Dwight Howard. You know, he, according to the stat sheet, he only took eight shots, but he was getting fouled over and over. Verizhao and Ogalskis fouled out of this game. That's how Howard was putting pressure on those guys. West had five fouls, so he was getting people in foul trouble. And going to the line, he made his free throws, 14 of 19. So, even though he only made five shots from the field, he had 24 points, nine boards, a uh, couple of assists. So, that's exactly what you want to see out of Dwight Howard. Just, I, I know he's not a great free throw shooter, but I think he needs to get down there and get fouled. It gets the other team in foul trouble, and if you give him a lot of free throw attempts, he's going to make some of them. It, it's not the worst thing you can do to try and close out a game with Howard on the line. I thought Lee, I was really impressed with Lee. I mean, his stats aren't monstrous or anything, but he got some big buckets for them. He did Courtney Lee things, grabbed some boards, grabbed three steals. I, I, I like what I see out of Courtney Lee. And Alston, excellent game from him, 18 points. You know, again, Alston's not a great player, but they just need him to contribute in little ways like that, and he did tonight with the um, 18 points, hit some threes. So... Magic, they weren't phased by what happened in Game 2. They came out, they took care of business. It was sloppy for a while, but when they needed it, they came out on top. So, <clears throat> definitely liked what I saw there from them. And tomorrow we got, so I'll just say props to the Magic. They're up 2-1. to one. And if they win the next game on a Tuesday, it, it it's looking really good for them. But we'll talk about that later. Lakers Nuggets playing tomorrow. I'm, I'm again. I'm pretty sure the Nuggets will take care of business here. And if they don't, that's just a little sad that we hyped that people were hyping the Nuggets up so much, and then they just go down three one and lose both games at home. So I'm pretty sure they'll win Monday. I wouldn't be shocked if LA did because I do still think LA is a really good team. But I'm pretty sure Denver will, Denver will win. So that's all I got. See ya.